With me, Senator Ben Cardin, Democrat of Maryland, ranking member on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Good evening, sir. And tonight, many people are trying to rewrite their views of what they thought should be done back in 2012 and 2013. This, we're in the sixth year of this crisis in Syria. I should note that back in 2013, you, sir, and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, you were one of the ones who voted we should do something. Oh, absolutely. We should have taken more definitive action. But the question is, what do we do now? And the world, the civilized world, cannot be silent on the use of chemical weapons against the civilian population through a bomb in the air. Only uh, President Assad could have done this with the help of Mr. Putin and Russia. Uh, this, we must speak out about this. M Mr. Assad has no legitimacy to lead Syria. He should be at The Hague held accountable for war crimes. And that's what the international community needs to insist upon. Back in 2013, as everyone does attempt to rewrite history, it's worth noting there's a lot of criticism of President Obama not taking action after his, his famous red line comment. But I think we should also factor into it as we look back in 2020 hindsight. At the time, Congress wasn't behind him. The American people in multiple polls were not behind him. We were war weary. No one wanted to put boots on the ground. No one wanted to be used force. And even the Brits voted down a resolution to join us in do, taking force against Syria. Is a very different time then, um, and now, of course, everyone's jumping on President Obama. Well, you're absolutely right about that. He did not have the support from Congress. He he had some support. I supported his actions to, to use military to stop the use of chemical weapons. That's that, that's something in which is uh, the international community needs to respond. But it, you're absolutely correct. There was not the support in Congress. There certainly wasn't the support in Europe. And remember, we thought with Russia's help, we were able to get all the chemical weapons out of Syria. We thought that was accomplished. Obviously, it was not. We were misled by Russia, and the consequences is that the Syrian civilian population today is at risk on the use of chemical weapons. That's unacceptable. All right. It's not just now the chemical. We're now talking about chemical weapons today as we look at these horrifying video, and the video is horrible. I mean, it's been, you know, I've seen a number, uh, I've done a number of videos, and what we see, it's just terrible. People are suffering, struggling to get air as this gas gets them. But the fact is, is that Assad has been using chemicals, or at least there have been chemical attacks suspected multiple times since 2013. It's not just in the last few days. And in fact, the UN, just the last month, there was an attempt to take a res to, to pass a resolution, a Security Council against Syria, but China and Russia vetoed it. So what are we going to do? Are we, is the world going to look the other way on this one? Well, I certainly hope not. I hope that what has been done here will cause the international community to say that this cannot continue and those responsible must be held accountable and that this is war crimes and that the international community must hold Mr. Assad responsible for these actions. Uh, yes, we know that they've been using some chemical uh, agents, but what we saw today looks more like sarin, looks more like a very intense chemical weapon that we were told was totally destroyed within Syria. The Security Council needs to take action. All right. At the, it, he's a war criminal. That's what you're saying. But the ICC is completely toothless, has done nothing. I mean, look at look at President Bashir in Sudan. He's got an indictment for genocide going back a number of years for killing lots of people in the Darfur region. And, and nobody does anything. Even South Africa wouldn't arrest him when he was there. So completely feckless there. He's a war criminal. But are, are you saying that we should do something alone in Syria? Or what are you saying we're going to do? We're not going to get help out of the U.N.? No, I would start with the Security Council. The Security Council did pass resolutions condemning Syria's use of chemical weapons. Now they have used a very strong agent again. It's time for the Security Council to put something behind that. I am also saying you don't uh, legitimate Mr. Assad. So I would hope that the Trump administration would not give any credibility that Mr. Assad, uh, President Assad has any legitimacy to remain as the leader of Syria. All right, let me ask you one quick question on a random topic, but one that I'm profoundly interested in. That's the nation of South Sudan, which right now is in the midst of a civil war. People are starving there. It's, it's incredible the number of people who are starving. And uh, do you have, as, as you, should the U.S. get involved in South Sudan? 
I think we have to. I think the international community needs to be engaged there. We have a famine that's caused by conflict. This is not just a weather-related famine. This is a conflict famine where literally millions of people are in jeopardy of starving to death. Uh, and it's because the government has little concern it over is. the welfare of the people of South Sudan. The international community needs to provide a safe haven for humanitarian relief and to get a, a relief from the conflict so that people can get help. It's just a terrible what's going on there, but I digress from Syria. Um, have, you, have you had any conversations with the White House over what's going on in Syria, or is it just too soon? We've had very little conversation. We don't know exactly what the, what the White House policy is in regards to Syria. They certainly have not announced that. They said there's going to be less transparency in the number of U.S. personnel involved in Syria. But we do need to have a concrete policy. Part of that is, yes, we want the parties to negotiate a peace agreement. No, Mr. Assad cannot be part of the future of Syria. Those responsible for these atrocities must be held accountable. We've said never again. The only way it'll be never again if we hold those that commit these atrocities accountable. Senator, thank you for joining me, sir. My pleasure. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.